Morning. All right, morning. Welcome back to Compound Interesting. Happy Halloween. I hope I scared you there. I'd say that was so scary. But yeah, today's video, we're going to have a look at the my favorite ARK Invest stocks. So ARK Invest, I'm sure you're aware of them. Absolute incredible firm with incredible research and have all their different indexes have absolutely destroyed the broader market. So they're, they're very successful over the last few years. We'll see if they can do it over the next 10, 20 years. A few of my stocks are also in their portfolio. Um, because we have a similar style like I mentioned, but also because I got inspiration from ARK Invest. So I'm going to go through my favorite stocks that they also hold and I'm going to give you their research about those stocks rather than my own so much. And I'll give you my points as well, why not? So these are the top 10 holdings of ARK Invest. They have a few other ones, but this is their main one. All right, so these are their top 10 holdings. So I'm not going to just give you the top five of their holdings. I'm going to give you my favorites out of the hundreds that they have. But we might as well start off with the number one spot there, Tesla, which is also my biggest position. I, I'm sure you're sick in the, I'm sure you're sick of hearing about Tesla on YouTube, but yeah, it, it still is an incredible investment in, in my opinion. So I'll quickly run you through the bullet points for Tesla from Ark Invest and from myself. All right, so at this stage, I think a lot of people are aware of the big growth catalyst potentially for Tesla, and that is the robot taxi network. Tesla are by far and away the leader in autonomous driving. Some sources will tell you otherwise, but they definitely are by far the leader and will be the number one person to have fully autonomous cars that can drive anywhere, no matter where you put them. Now, ARK Invest have priced this opportunity, the robo-taxi opportunity at two trillion in cash flow over the next ten, uh, 10 years. So they're saying that Tesla will earn two trillion profits over the next 10 years from the robo-taxi network or sorry, well, the whole robo-taxi network opportunity, not Tesla specifically, but Tesla is the most likely candidate to take the majority of that market share. So ARK anticipates that going and getting a robo-taxi will be the cheapest form of transport that there is, almost as cheap as public transport, cheaper than having your own personal car and much easier because you don't have to pay for parking and everything. Cheaper than even short haul flights and faster because you won't have to actually go to the airport, you know, do all that stuff and obviously much cheaper than getting a normal taxi or even an Uber with a driver in it. So they think it's gonna be 25 cent a mile to order a robo taxi. So in the future, they envision that most people will travel using robo taxis because you can just go onto your app, get your robo taxi delivered to you and it'll take you anywhere. And obviously that'll be super cheap because you don't have to pay any wages. You're only paying for the electricity of carrying the robo taxi around. There's also many growth projections that see Tesla selling up to 10, well, te Tesla's own targets and goals have them selling 10 million cars by 2030. That would put them in revenues of like, depending on the average price of the car, but hundreds and hundreds of billions per year in revenue and a 20X in the amount of cars that they're selling now. However, no one is really taken into consideration or not a lot of people are taking into consideration that if robo taxis actually do take over, then the amount of cars sold annually, which is like, Around 20 million cars in the US and 100 million cars worldwide are sold every year. But if robo taxis take over, people are less likely to need a personal car. And a lot of people are anticipating that families won't even bother getting. If a family lives in a city or in a suburb, they won't even bother getting a personal car because it actually costs a lot of money. And you could save an enormous amount of money by just getting robo taxis everywhere because they're just as convenient as a personal car. And it could save you thousands and thousands of euros or dollars per year to just use robot taxis instead of a car. Anyone who really cares about money probably won't bother getting a car. It'll kind of just be a thing of the past, potentially. So that could damage the amount of cars sold annually. And maybe it might be a little bit more dif difficult for Tesla to reach their goals of 10 million cars per year. However, a lot of people are going to be buying Teslas because they have the robo taxi function. So maybe out of those 100 million cars, we only sell 60 million, but 10 million of those are Teslas. We'll have to wait and see anyway. Elon Musk has also iterated a few times that they reckon the energy business, so their storage, energy storage, batteries, uh, solar panels, etc., will actually earn them as much in revenue as their car business earns in revenue. So by 2030, that could be like another trillion dollars in revenue from the energy side of their business. So we're, we're looking at huge revenue numbers, like the, the biggest revenue so company in the world right now earns like two to 400 billion. The biggest ones in the world earn like two to 400 billion per year. By 2030, we're looking at Tesla earning one to two trillion. So if we, if we slap on a price to sales ratio of like four or five, you're looking at a five, four or five trillion dollar market cap, which was 
at least a 10x from here. We also have to talk about the extras, so infotainment in the car. If your car is driving itself, Tesla can sell, Netflix can sell, Spotify can sell, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of software in the car. But other software upgrades like the, the autonomous capabilities of the car or the software upgrades that they're doing where your car gets acceleration, an extra half a second of acceleration just over a software update, pretty insane. But yeah, that's already a legit thing already. And to add to that, these are only projections from things that we know about, but knowing Elon Musk, I'm 100% certain that's not the, the last thing he's invented for Tesla. He's already released the idea of the $25,000 car, the cheap mass market vehicle that will bring them up to the 10 million cars per year. But I'm sure that there's other things down the road that other vehicles that Tesla will sell in the future, the van, maybe even a plane, a helicopter, who knows what Elon Musk is cooking up or what's going on in his brain. I'm sure there's something else that's gonna be released in the next 10 years that will earn them a fortune in the fact that it'll be so useful to society. All right, so now we'll have a look at ARK Invest's price targets for Tesla. So this was um, before the split, this was in 20, 2019, and these are five-year price predictions, so what the price should be in 2024. Now these are old price targets and they're actually being updated as we speak. So we'll probably get some new price targets soon. But here we can see their their bear case for Tesla is 1,500. So this is pre-split. So that gives $300 post-split, a little bit lower than what it, where it is now. Their expected value was 7,000 and that works out as 1,400 post-split. So 1,400 from now would be like, what's that, uh, a 3X? And then their bull case is 15,000, which gives us 3,000 post split. So that would be a 10x, well, not quite a 10x, but about an 8x from here by 2024 in the bull case. But they also have this golden goose, golden goose scenario, which puts the price target at 22,000. That's insane. Which is 4,400 price post the price split. So about a 10x from here. Do I think this is possible or do I think this is a bit over the top? Personally, I think this is more than possible. I think people will be surprised by how quickly the sales, how quickly things just switch from people buying ICE vehicles to people buying, everyone buying mostly electric vehicles. It's gonna happen pretty much in the space of a year. I'm not sure what year it will happen, but at some stage, once, once electric vehicles become so much better than ICE vehicles, just people just won't go and buy an ICE vehicles and it will happen really, really quickly. So I think in five years, Tesla could easily be the number one seller of cars in the entire world in five years. Once they have that cheap car coming out, everyone's gonna buy a Tesla. It's just like the iPhone. Everyone's gonna buy, everyone bought the iPhone once it came out or once it became popular kind of overnight. All right, so pick number two is CRISPR. So this is a real spec play. This is a tiny company. But there's a few companies working in this, in this space. ARK Invests have their most of their money in CRISPR, in the company CRISPR. And what CRISPR does, it uses CRISPR technology. So what, what this technology can do, basically when a virus attacks your body, these CRISPR natural CRISPR Cas9 systems attack the virus and they also retain a piece of the virus. So then if that virus ever comes back, these CRISPR Cas9s can, they have a piece of the virus, they compare it to any new incoming things and they say, oh look, there's the virus and they just can cut it out of your DNA or your genes or whatever. So essentially what CRISPR does, what the technology does, it hijacks these natu this natural phenomenon or this natural technology and uses it to, instead of attacking viruses or cutting out viruses, it uses the Cas9 to cut out genetic mutations. For example, cystic fibrosis is a monogenetic disease, meaning that it's just a problem with one of your genes that causes this problem and uh, at the moment, only 5% of curable, only 5% of monogenetic diseases are curable. But with CRISPR, ARK Invest and these companies that use this technology think all, of, all monogenetic diseases can be cured. And ARK Invest also add to that. I'll let Kathy Woods tell you. Only 5% of them are treatable today. With gene editing, all of them potentially will be treatable. And then beyond that, Monogenic is only 2% of all the genes out there. So if I were to tell you that if we were able to solve all the problems for people with 
monogenic disease, that that's a $2 trillion opportunity. Can you imagine how big the polygenic opportunity is going to be? Yeah, so Kathy Wood at the time thought maybe polygenetic diseases, all diseases could be wiped out by CRISPR-Cas9 technology. And upon doing a little bit more research, I think this is a little less likely than they think. And it's, it'd be extraordinarily complicated to do polygenetic diseases using Cas9 systems, unfortunately. So when I first looked into this company and this technology, I thought, oh, okay, this is gonna wipe out. Humans aren't gonna have to deal with diseases anymore, but maybe that's a little bit of a pipe dream. However, we can still we can still see that this is a, a two trillion dollar opportunity. And if you don't invest in just one of these companies, so there's CRISPR, there's Intellia, and there's Editas, who are all using this technology. They're the three big boys anyway in the space. But if you don't want to invest in any one of those companies because you don't know which one's going to do the best, I would probably just what I've done personally. I've invested most of my money in CRISPR, the company CRISPR, and I've also invested in ArcG, Arc Invest, Genomic. Uh, index fund. I don't know a huge amount about this space, so I'm a little bit more wary on just choosing one stock. So I just went with the stock that ARK Invest have chosen to be their biggest portion. All right, so next up on my list, m one of my personal favorites, my second biggest position, uh, Spotify. And it's only a small position in ARK Invest index fund, but it's a really large position in mine. That's because I use it every day. I love the product. Okay, I want you to do this for me now. I want you to go into your phone, I want you to go into settings. I want you to do the search screen time. And then I want, to, want you to mark down which apps you use the most every day. So look at your screen time for the last week or so. That was a little hack that I got from Chamat Palihapitiya. But if you use those apps every day, obviously they're getting a lot of your attention. So attention is value. And Spotify is, is the app that I use the most. I listen to podcasts. I love podcasts now. And I love music. So I listen to both of them every single day and I can see myself having Spotify for the next 20 years, paying that 10 euro per month for the next 20 years. No doubt about it, because I get so much value out of it. Well, if you're from America, Spotify isn't as popular, but in Europe, everyone uses Spotify pretty much. No one really uses Apple Music so much. So Spotify has 95 million users in Europe. And you gotta remember like a lot of, the majority of phone users in the world use Android not iPhones. The still large majority of people use Android and Android users are less likely to go out and buy or download Apple Music. They're more likely to kind of go to Spotify in my opinion. So that's one of the reasons why I think Spotify will be the number one music streaming and podcast streaming platform in the world. They're going after audio. They want audio. They want to have audio locked down. So they're going crazy after podcasting. Signed Joe Rogan for an exclusive deal. He gets hundreds of millions of downloads per month and soon it's gonna be exclusively on Spotify and they're doing this with a few different creators. So they're making exclusive content, kind of like Netflix started to do and you see how well that did for Netflix. So they're getting, it's making their own exclusive content like Michelle Obama and like Kim Kardashian or something. You can imagine the amount of listeners they're gonna get and of course making Joe Rogan exclusive to Spotify for the next three years is gonna onboard an enormous amount of users onto Spotify because they're gonna to need to get the, they're gonna to have to download the app eventually if they're hardcore fans. People in the future and people right now actually, they wanna be stimulated 24 seven. They wanna get dopamine or they wanna be listening to something. If they're out walking the dog, if they're out doing something that they can't watch something, they can't be on their phones, they have to actually use their eyes, then they want to at least be listening to something, whether it be a podcast, whether it be an audiobook or music. So that's what Spotify, that's the market that Spotify is going into. So plenty of room to grow still, in my opinion. And they have like 140 million subscribers. Yeah, 140 million subscribers in comparisons to Netflix, which has 193 million subscribers. So a little bit less than Netflix, but all these subscribers are paying the same amount of money. But Spotify has a way lower market cap than Netflix. So why is that? Spotify doesn't even have to pay for all this content to get created on Netflix. So next up we have Square. So I've talked about all these Tesla, Spotify and Square before. And when I gave those recommendations back in like April or something, like all these stocks have absolutely done so well. So Square at that time, it was like $60 when I recommended it. And now it's 190, but I think it's gone down, back down a little bit. But yeah, a little bit less of a buy now, obviously, because the price has gone up so much. 
But yeah, it's still one of my favorite stocks, but maybe it's a little bit pricey at the moment. So ARK Invest have a price target on Square by 2024 of 375, so 375 dollars. And this price target was made back when Square was only, you know, around 50, 60 dollars, maybe even somewhere around that. <coughs> but obviously Square has just done extraordinarily well in the last few months, quadrupled or something. So, but I like ARK Invest. They uh, they open source all their research and they help also open source their valuation models for Square. So I'll leave a link for that in the description, but you can look at these Excel files. So I'll grab it up here. So as we can see, they have Square's total revenue by 2025 at $49 billion, whereas now it's $4.7 billion, and their total revenue excluding Bitcoin at $30 billion. Because Bitcoin revenue isn't really revenue, it's just them, like every time someone buys one Bitcoin, they count that as ten thousand dollars in revenue which doesn't really make any sense so that's not real revenue in my eyes but yeah so 30 billion dollars in revenue for square by 2025 is arc invest is the prediction from arc invest price models and if we apply like a three to four to five price to sales ratio that would put square in like a hundred to two hundred billion dollar price point which isn't so much higher than it is right now so Square, an amazing company. I love Cash App and I invested loads of money into it, but kind of stopped once it got past like 120, 130. I think it's getting a little bit pricey at the moment. And if you're investing in it now, you're kind of hoping that Square is going to replace banks. You've got to really believe that Square can replace banks. So for example, the revenue of JP Morgan Chase, one of the biggest banks in the world, or if not the biggest bank in the world, is 115 billion dollars per year so square to get up to 50 billion dollars yeah that's probably definitely possible but could square could like replace like a few banks and get to like 100 billion dollars in revenue that's when you can be looking for a 10x and then maybe square would be an attractive investment right now at these price levels but you've got to really believe that all right so the last pick for today you're some of you might hate me for this but yeah, not really a stock, but the last pick for today is something I love. I'm sure some of you have guessed it by now, but it is Bitcoin. And ARK Invest bought a lot of Bitcoin back in the day and sold it during the Bitcoin bull run. So they made a good amount of money off Bitcoin. They've been researching Bitcoin for many years and have released an enormous amount of research on Bitcoin recently. So we'll go through their most recent. They released two white papers on Bitcoin recently, but they can't really invest in Bitcoin right now because of regulatory reasons. But they were investing using Grayscale's GBTC, which is basically a stock for Bitcoin that you can buy on any stock exchange. But their research is a little bit different than other research that I've seen on Bitcoin out there. They're kind of going at it from first principles. It's not the most amazing research on Bitcoin, in my opinion. They're coming, but they're definitely given, coming from a different angle. But I don't think their models are as good as other Bitcoin research because maybe they're better just researching companies rather than an asset class. But anyway, we'll go through their predictions anyway. So they predict that Bitcoin will get to one between one to five trillion over the next five to 10 years, um, which doesn't really align with other predictions and it doesn't really align with the halving cycles or his, or historical price data, which would kind of put Bitcoin in like two to five trillion dollars within the next one to three years, roughly. So, but yeah, maybe looking at it from completely from first principles and not using past price or the halving cycles that seem obvious to most people but they're not using that at all in their price predictions but anyway we'll go through their reasons for believing bitcoin is going to do well so firstly they believe it's going to be a global set settlement network which makes a lot of sense so if you want to send millions of dollars from here to i don't know turkey or i don't know argentina if you want to sell millions of dollars bitcoin right now is the best the fastest and the cheapest and the most secure way to do that. And there's no middlemen and no one can stop you if you want to do that. So you can send millions of dollars. I saw one transaction recently, someone sent like billions of dollars, literally billions of dollars in one transaction. It was either 1 billion or 15 billion, some crazy amount of money. They sent it in 15 minutes to another account for like $15 or something, like basically no money for the amount of money that they were transferring. Obviously with any other kind of bank or transfer system, you couldn't do this. It would take weeks, probably weeks, and probably hundreds of thousands to 
make this transaction. So global settlement network, Bitcoin is one of the most obvious choices for that. And as we can see from this graph, that would put Bitcoin, if it was 10% of settlements worldwide, that would put Bitcoin's value at 70,000 according to ARK Invest. The other nice thing about Bitcoin is it's very hard to seize. Uh, government can't just go into your Bitcoin bank account and take it. They've got to actually get your ledger. They've got to get your passcode and they've got to send it to themselves. Protection against seizure of your assets. And according to ARK Invest, that would put Bitcoin's price up to a maximum of 200,000 price per Bitcoin. The next bull point according to ARK Invest, and this is the biggest bull point in my eyes, but not really to them. They're not really looking at it in the right way in my opinion, but as a digital gold, as an alternative to gold, they're putting at 10, up to a maximum of 10% the market cap of gold. And I don't know why they don't put it at 100% the market cap of gold or even 200% the market cap of gold. Because if you've watched any of my other videos, Bitcoin is a lot more useful than gold as a store of value and as money, in my opinion. So 10% of gold would put it at a price of $40,000 per Bitcoin. But yeah, as I mentioned, in my opinion, this is a little bit cautious and I think Bitcoin could easily eventually hit the market cap of gold and that would put it at a price of $400,000. Bitcoin, please go to moon. Stop going sideways now. Don't have I say we going down to 1k, but Mr. Novokrat say we have a tomed out. A tomed out, Novokrat is bullish. A tomed out, Tomed out is bearish. Bitcoin can be at 40,000. Let us go to moon.